I thought I'd talk about a few life's lessons before the sun goes down. It's just about ready to go down here in Montana. And uh, I wanted to say something about chasing the winds of vanity and happiness and how miserable people are, especially when you call yourself a Christian and you're just a happiness idolater. You know, <laughs> there's a scripture that says, happy is the man that doesn't condemn themselves in what they allow. And it really should condemn us to make other people miserable because we're miserable, because we're serving our own happiness. And so there's these two scriptures I've read recently. One of them is in John 15, and the other one is in 1 John chapter 1. And they both say that your joy may be full, that your joy may be full. So most people are washed in their hands of any obligation to actually understand the spirit that they are of, the spirit of their words, and how they affect people in real time. And so again, after 38 years, I've known a lot of people, I've seen a lot of life experiments, a lot of life experiments of those that are chasing the winds of happiness and vanity and idolatry and how miserable those people actually are because we were never made to serve our own happiness. As a matter of fact, we pass from death unto life when we love our brethren, when we care about how we actually are affecting other people. So I listened to this thing my husband did in 2004, and it basically, he was drawing a picture of how when we don't take care of our own good spirit and our own good, keep our own conscience void of offense towards God and man so we contain a good spirit, everybody will pay. We make other people pay because we don't just do that. And, and then again, when you're just looking to be happy, 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 and you're sensual, 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 and me and Jesus got a good thing going, it doesn't really matter what I say, what I think, what I do with other people. Only the, 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 my highest interest should be my own personal happiness. Me and Jesus got a good thing going. You don't ever actually see the operation of God in what you're supposed to learn in your day in real life situations with real life people. So I've seen a lot of people try to clean up their mess, but they try to clean up their mess in a, some kind of fantasy world with them and Jesus, not in real, what they did that their heart condemned them in, in real life situations. And so back to the guy who, uh, you know, I, 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 the last video I did was about two different men, same name, same kind of coming to, you know, they're older, they're both older, so they're looking at their days being numbered, right? And one of them has lived in real time and real situations with real people and grabbed hold of what he was supposed to learn in the operation of God and how to love God and how to love his brother better. And even when I we met him in Germany years ago, and I think Gene made a, uh, talked to him about what it means to be a fool when you lack in judgment. And he sent us a tape like a month later after we left Germany and he had every scripture about being a fool on the piece of paper. And he sent a two hour video, I mean tape, a cassette tape, about what it, that was like in his life, being a fool. It was mind blowing, but what I've seen again about him is his life has drastically changed because in real time, in real situations with real people, he grabbed on to life's lessons with God and Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, and what he was supposed to learn, how he could up his game and who he was, what he, what he was saying, what he was thinking, what he was doing in real time with real people. But the people that have me and Jesus got a good thing going, they can do stuff that's off, say stuff that's off, and they never learn anything from it. They never come back to you. They, don't, they can hardly say they're sorry. They, and so there's a scripture I was talking to somebody about earlier, it says, those that deny things falsely, what, what could that be? How I talk to my kids, how I talk to my husband, what I just said, what I just thought. Those that deny things falsely, the, the real music in their soul, it's too hard to serve the Lord. It's too hard to love your brother, right? Whatever, you know, is going on deep inside of us that we're affecting other people with because of the very essence of who we are. Those that deny things falsely feed on the winds. Demonic spirits talk to them. They let lies lodge in them. The father of lies gets to, and every little demonic spirit that wants to have a party, it's too hard. I can't bitter fretting, fear, unbelief, whatever it is, whatever drunkenness on the cup of devils. There's a scripture about that. 
if that's in First Corinthians 10. <laughs> Drunk on the cup of devils, eating at the devil's table. Yeah, if, if we'll party with the devil, he'll be more than happy to let us. So <clears throat> I was telling her also, so back to the scripture, those that deny things falsely feed on the winds. In a land that's trodden, they travel thirsty and gain nothing. It's a bit like the Jeremiah curse when your trust is in man. You make the arm of flesh your strength. You, you're a traveling desert with no food, with no... And so really what changed my life is how am I loving in real time, in real situations with real people? And I can have a relationship with the real Jesus about real life in real times in real situations with real people and, and trade in my low thoughts for God's high thoughts so I can at least run to make things right or recover myself when I've said something off or done something off in real time in real situations. I'm actually taking the yoke of Jesus upon me and learning of him because his yoke of loving God and loving your brother is light. You know, come unto me all you who are weary and heavy laden, burdened by everything, burdened by the burden of trying to be happy, right? It's a big burden, right? It'd make you bitter, critical, and offended, and vengeful if you serve your own happiness because we were never made to chase the wind of happiness. It is what Ecclesiastes is all about, chasing the wind chasing the winds of vanity, and how sad it is for people to just serve their own belly their whole life, their own lust, their belly, because everybody goes down in that ship. You affect everybody the wrong way because everybody else is supposed to serve your happiness too. There's no brotherly love. There's no brotherly help because your God is your belly. Your mind is set on earthly things, and the only thing that matters is your own personal happiness, right? So anybody that's chasing the winds of happiness those are the most miserable people on, on the earth. They're fretters, they're whiners, they're complainers. Everything is a, a sabotage against their own personal happiness. There is no learning of Jesus in the world of the happiness idolater. Whether you're looking to man, food, drugs, sex, rock and roll, whatever it is you're looking to your little belly to make you happy with, it's always empty. It's vain. It's chasing the wind. So I just thought I'd... I talk about that. Give up the chase of your own personal happiness because you'll never be happy because true joy comes from loving God and loving your brother, that your joy may be full. You should look those scriptures up. It all has to do with loving God and loving your brother. And when you think, oh, it's too hard to love God and love your brother. Yeah, that's your have welcome to a miserable life because what's hard is to be madly in love with you and your personal happiness. You can spend your whole life being miserable just because that, because hell and destruction are never full. So true, full joy only comes from loving God and loving your brother. And the only way you can do that is if you understand your own miserable self, you'll be able to love your brother and it won't be very hard because those who have been forgiven much, love much. Hope this helps somebody to give up chasing the wind of happiness and making everybody pay for it. Amen.